Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lore Time. How are you, Bo? So good to see you. So great to see you. It's been the, weak. <laughs> this thing happens where we'll do something and you get we get a real ass full of each other. And then and it's like we just we just like don't talk, <laughs> but it's nice to catch up. I'm glad we're doing a no. Then a we log on and it's like, well, hey, what are you? Hey, doing? man. Uh, so, so I just who got do we got today. Oh my god, we got we got us. We got us mm. per usual. Mm, mm, um, mm. This one's a little different. This is something we've never done before, be- mostly because I haven't toured. You haven't toured in five years. Yeah, truly. So the the and then I just did a, a four day East Coast tour, <laughs> which is the longest thing I've done since 2018. <laughs> then my eyes have seen the road, baby. Oh my god, I'm worn. Do you hear me? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm gone for eight months. Um, and you know the world the world has changed so much, Bo. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to hear the what's changed. I want to know. I want to know. This is great. This is exciting. The last show of the store is is case in point to how much things have changed, but we'll we'll okay. get there. Um, okay. Ooh. It was four days. It was we we were lucky enough to join for four days of a very long tour, yeah. which was Sanguisugabog, Cruelty, Vomit Forth, Gates to Hell. Crazy tour. Crazy tour. And I said Stacked. every night on this thing, I said, listen. People are going to look back at this thing Mm -hmm. and go, damn, I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. And I think a key reason to that is how rare is it for these kind of like hardcore dudes playing death metal type bands, a bill of four or five of them where they're playing the same music you'd hear at fucking Ozfest or (laughs) fucking open air. Yeah, yeah. But a full ensemble of guys who are encouraging you to spin kick. Yeah. Doesn't happen. No, it does not happen. And when you grow up listening to dying fetus and suffocation and stuff, like you hear these parts and you go, damn, do they know? So I, I've been meaning to ask you because you will know more dying fetus embrace spin kicking. And 100%. stuff. Do they just don't always have the opportunity for no, their, their, no, fan, I know, their audience but, to do it. What I'm asking is, does internal bleeding or suffocation? Fuck yeah. Are they this? They're all on the 100%. same. That's so sick. They know, like especially internal bleeding. Yeah. Like the guitar player of an internal bleeding is a younger guy now named Chris. He works the door at AMH and he's in Missing Link. You know. Oh, sick. like he Very he sick. gets. They get it. Yeah. Uh, they hundred percent. They want it all. Uh, but now it's when when they're drawing when suffocation is drawing suffocation fans and dying fetus is drawing dying fetus fans yeah they don't have the space to accommodate both kinds of freaks you know where single sugabog now mm-hmm. is harmoniously drawing this collection of people that is there for to do everything wow you got the juggalo makeup black metal shirts in the front. (laughs) You got the camo pants, hard lore shirt, spin Mm. kicking, you know, Mm. you got, you got the push putter. Who's like, you guys, you guys, you guys are radical, man. I saw you with suicide silence. I'm I'm here. I'm here. Dude. I saw a video. I think that vomit fourth posted of just like an actual cool push pit. Vomit, well, think, no, that was a wall of death, which they did every night. No, no, no. It, well, it wasn't that. It was okay. just like a cool in kind of in the back push pit. <laughs> yeah, dude. There which were, is there like were, there were multiple pits some nights. But, in like push pits camp suck rooms. when it's like got like one on one. But oh. when it's just like a calamity, like boiling water, then it's amazing. That's what it's supposed to be. Like that's, that's what it's supposed goal. to be. And that's yeah. what those fuckers are trying to do when they're like, "Come on, man." Yeah. Come yeah. on. That's <laughs> what that, the goal is that everybody's I, doing it fucking hate that and it does look cool but <laughs> it looks so cool it does but what spin kicking and like a sea of kicks <laughs> is like yeah, nothing better um maybe we need the scorecards for dying fetus at fya we're gonna need something for dying fetus. <laughs> Honestly, dude, I was we're, thinking we're about that need something I was thinking about that on my flight home last yeah. night just staring at the flyer nervous 
I had like chills. Cause like, like we, we talked about this for life of agony too last year yeah. or earlier this year where it was like, Oh shit. It like, might there's be scary. never going to be a better time or place for this thing to happen. hundred percent. And I look in, in one, in one way I look at that and go, finally, you know, finally oh, yeah. th- this can occur. On the other hand, I look at it and go, you motherfuckers don't know shit about dying fetus. <laughs> and it makes me want to bring a weapon. You know, <laughs> don't say it's Florida. You can't like dual wield some that. swords. I mean, I don't, oh, mean I, gotcha. a, I don't mean a gun. I mean, I mean like, like some nunchucks or something, you know? <laughs> so walk me through, um, when'd you fly out? I love the logistics part of a little okay. mini fly out tour. So uh, we got a sweet minivan, dude. And we're a four, piece, we're a four piece band. Yeah. Oh, Oh, so it was that's truly so sick. Yeah, so comfortable. Yeah. So my biggest advice to you is start a four piece, man, <laughs> or Ditch three. The dead weight. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Either do one guitar, or sing and play guitar. Because mm-hmm. good God, I don't mean you. Just you don't have any dead weight in harm's way. I'm talking to new bands out here. Well, I'm probably the dead weight. In yeah, way. come on, leave Bo hey. alone. Hey. <laughs> so uh, would you? Uh, where'd you fly to? Newark. Oh. Since we started in Asbury Park. Yeah. Which, you know, flying, dude, flying west to east just destroys an entire day. It's an entire day. It's crazy. And I don't Coming think Coming home Coast from people, Sound of Fury. No, they don't get it. They don't get Coming it. home from Sound of Fury ruined me. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, re- my sleep schedule is, as you know, it's still so yeah. fucked. Whereas last night, yesterday, <sighs> I flew home. I was in, I was in my living room by 4 p.m. Yeah. Went to the movies, you know, <laughs> like had a normal day after. Yeah. It's tired, yeah. but went to Wingstop yeah. anyway. So Newark uh, flying there, you fly into Newark, uh, got a little minivan. We I'm stressing, you know, I'm like, how are we going to fit? Oh yeah. And then it was like, <laughs> we could have fit. I could have brought five more guitars. This is fine. We could have fit a whole drum kit in here. Uh, we're doing Priceline, getting hotels every night, dude. Oh, woo. It, and, and it's price. Oh, because you're a four piece band. Nobody's on the floor. Exactly. Oh, my God. Hotel prices also haven't really changed. I was just watching a whole thing about how Airbnb is like collapsing and hotel prices have just like maintained. Dude, the Chad Hotel versus the Virgin Airbnb. Straight truly. up, dude. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, when we were touring heavily, a, yeah. a hotel room was probably 139, 159. Yeah. You know? And then with, with taxes, it's like 200 bucks. Same. It's maybe less than. Yeah. Yeah. Because I paid, I got like my own room the first night and it was like 150. So sick. Yeah. Huge. Amazing. Which, Amazing. you know, you can't do that for a month. No, but you cannot do that for a month. For I'm, I'm doing four days. It's, uh, it's worth it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But a band on tour making 300 a night. Maybe not realistic. Yeah, of so, course. But you know, we're not there yet. But I think bands in general are being paid a little more across the board. This is something I wanted to touch on. Was I don't know. I don't know. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No. I know. But but you do know from Dead Body and your various machines that like merch is crazy. Yeah, merch is crazy, and I think uh, Cruelty is the prime example of that. Really? They had merch deliveries every day. Oh. And and I think a lot of that is like poor planning or not no, no, poor but not you at know all, what I mean. but I think it's people going, "Yo, this man's from Japan. We got to <sighs> We got to support them." That's amazing. Which that I saw that everywhere. Like they had a they had a line out the door every night. We had a show in Asbury Park on the like second post-human headliner that we did mm-hmm. and a pipe burst and the show got canceled. <laughs> Really? So I've never played there. Yeah. It's like, probably the same venue, I would imagine. Probably, it has to be. And that yeah. place was awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what I've heard. And yeah. it literally flooded. I got pizza down the street at a place called Luigi's. So you know it's called <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> Have you heard if of If I see a pizza place called Mario or Luigi, I'm going. Yeah. Because I know it's good. But um, the show was, show was very good. You're, uh, Andy, and Aaron and Andy from You're the Knife came. Oh, right. Which was like Ugh. their first time leaving the house, basically. How are they? So good, dude. 
watching those videos of them walking like got me in multiple directions because it was, it was like I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm like so happy, but I'm like wincing and I'm like ah, like. I was like <sighs> moshing into them and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really cool. I mean, that felt like that felt like a big moment just to have them there and it's awesome. Know that that's where they are. Yeah. Um, New Jersey. Let's see what happened that day. The first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me preface this. George, the drummer of Dead Body, yes. um, one of a kind eccentric mm. out of his mind type fellow, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're here and, and I'll, I'll pre preface this dead body as an assortment of guys is like funny, even to us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like George, he and I maybe had two conversations before joining the band miles app, uh, from apparition, formerly of harness, uh, the best guy, the ultimate shredder, but like, mm. We've never once thought to be in a band together because mm-hmm. it was just like, ah, he's got his own stuff. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's truly like an example of kind of the old way of putting the band together. Yeah. Yeah. Like an ad in the back of the paper or yeah, something. Like instead yeah. of being like, yeah. oh, that's my really good friend. I should start a band with him. Yes. It was more like, who's the, the best guy we can get for this for kind of every role? And I think Taylor even maybe it was like, I wasn't, I don't think I was in the initial plans. For being a dead mm-hmm. body. It was kind of just like he was going to sing in this kind of grind band. Yeah. And then it was like, what if I play bass and sang with you? And then we had to try it out. Yeah. So. And it's, I so, feel I like, dude, I have so much fun. This may be the most tell. fun, to be honest. Uh, yeah, because you're it's, not singing. I'm not singing, singing. You're not drumming. Going, ah! Yeah. And bass is the best thing in the world. Yeah. And like, and their like their job is to play really tight and yeah, make it sonically impressive. So I'm like, okay, I got my role here. Yeah, but you know this what pisses just, me off about you? Every video I see of you playing in that band, what's that? Your fingers are doing great. You're not. <laughs> that is the hold on. That is the biggest thing of water I have ever. Seen. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm doubly pissed now. Your fingers are doing all this crazy shit. Like you're not just playing notes. Yeah. Like single notes. I notice. And it's just like, he, he can't, he can't just do that. Normal. You got to fucking, <laughs> you're like, uh, <laughs> what's, what's dude from Russia's the singer from Russia's name. It's not Neil Pert. No, the, the, other the other, the homie, the homie uh, you're fuck. doing him where he's like, I, I can play Getty synth. Lee, Getty Lee. I, I could play synth with my feet. <laughs> like that's what you're doing up there, dude. That's maybe nice for me. So tell me about George, dude. Okay, so George is insane. I love him to death. <laughs> but the man, so I thought I could eat. <laughs> and brother, when I say he puts me to shame, uh, you know I mean it. Yeah, because you claim to out eat Brody, which is who true. one would assume is like a, a caloric. Hurricane. It is true. You know? George eats twice as much as me. Holy fuck, dude! We went to a place called Tops Diner mm-hmm. in uh, East Newark, New Jersey. Oh, dude, a diner in New Jersey. It oh. was incredible, Bo. Oh, that? every aspect of it was incredible. <laughs> the, like, did they have you, the glass case with the desserts? Beyond that, they have a sixty-year-old <laughs> cheesecake recipe. Yes, and one bite of it was just like this is the one. Uh, and then they have like a dedicated coffee shop section if you can't see, sit yet. Ah, so we smart. went in there first. It is 1030 in the morning. George has, has to try the cheesecake at 1030 in the morning before we've, eaten, before we've done anything. <laughs> but it was just like we're ordering like cold brews and stuff like wiping the boogers out of our eyes. And we just hear like, can I get the cheesecake with no raspberry in it? Because for uh, you guys, it's 7.30 in the morning. Yeah, and he's he's housing cheesecake. <laughs> uh, well, what, but we thought he was insane, and then it came, and we were like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess that's really the preface to how gnarly he eats, but when we're in the van on... <laughs> this, like, defined the weekend, and... <laughs> I don't think there's a way for me to describe it and accurately show how funny it was. Of course. But 
when we're driving, we're like in a heated discussion, like all talking, all participating. And then it gets to a point where I'm like in the middle of a story about whatever we're talking about. Yeah. And then George's phone, as loud as it possibly can, as loud as a phone can make a sound. iPhone or Android? I Android. <laughs> His Android, as <laughs> loud as a phone has ever done anything, says, Autobots, roll out. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of notification was it? I don't know. So we're just crying now. Like we're all we're all in tears for 30 minutes now. Just saying it over and over again. And he's like, sorry, fellas. What were we saying? <laughs> George, it just doesn't matter. It was unbelievable. Uh, so oh. that just defined everything. You know? What'd you eat at the diner though? We all got the, the Cubano. Nice. Oh, dude. And they have these like cheeseburger egg roll things. Like cheat. No, oh, it was, uh, was yeah. cheesesteak egg rolls. Ooh. Yes. With a, with a like clam and shrimp bisque. Whoa. Dude, it was Wild. gnarly. And then, and then we all got the Cubano, which was pretty good. Pretty good. I love, did it come with mustard on it? The Cubano? Yeah. Of course. I love that. Love a Cubano. Love but then me it too. had bread and butter pickles on it, which I don't care for those really. Oh, man, uh, Jack, that just could could about could ruin my day on the happiest of days. Yeah, I got you. A surprise bread and butter pickle is one of the most devastating things a man can experience. Because you really don't know until you're past like the best part of the pickle, nope. which is the crunch. Yeah. And then you're like, "Oh, a pickle." Oh. <laughs> it's it's like eating a steak and then getting Ketchup, like, honestly. It's like a poop with sugar on it, you know? Oh, God. Yeah, it's just like that. Nobody wants sugary poop. You don't mm -mm. want that. Mm -mm. Uh, and so driving to Asbury Park, felt good, felt a bit good. You know, it was like, uh, it was like uh, forget about it, you know? Yeah, of course. You motherfucker. You, that's, that's, how, that's how we felt. Was, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. going to, hey it's in Jersey. Uh, show was fucking sick. I think it was... Almost sold out, which in a big ass room like that was already a surprise. Yeah. And cruelty went to Wawa after, but we'll get there. Um oh, this was one. <laughs> so there's a, a Midnight Suns band, like the the band. So Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, myself, Josiah, and Austin Crane were in a band called the Midnight Suns years and ago. Wasn't Andrew Morsey? And Andrew Morsey, of course. But yeah, I don't think Andrew's in the chat since he got a non-American an expat. Number. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Rick to life has been in the band chat since it began for some reason. <laughs> He's just been in there, and he finally responded. Uh, and there's just a, a, a solid half hour of just back and forth with Rick to life in the Midnight Suns chat. So he might be on the show soon to, uh, you know, clear up some. Some truths and some lies about him, you know, but mostly truths. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. So that's going to be good. <laughs> uh, show was fucking awesome. Mm. You know, what? It, it, the different thing now being at these shows post hard lore is like people coming from hearing about it on hard lore. So that's a whole new thing to get used to. Oh, sick. You know? That's yeah. fucking awesome. So that is cool. Uh, and it's it's nothing but cool, straight up. Is somebody mm -hmm. being like, "Hey, hey, love the show." Is like, dang. Let me ask you something, mm. and this is something I want to, I kind of feel I need to address. Yep. While you're setting up, while you're getting ready to play, or yeah. in between songs, I know you guys are always making noise for the most part. We don't really. We 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 leave it silent. There's so that there's we some can dead spots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are people yelling hard lore or anything? There's a few. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, I I just want to say that I think a, a band is like a special thing in what yeah. we're all about yeah. and is like greater than right. any band is greater than hard lore. Yeah, you know no, I mean? 100%. I, I so think for the most part, it was before and after. Okay. It wasn't really between songs, mm -hmm. which is, okay. that's just them being like, Hey, this is maybe yeah. the only time I'm going to see you today. So I've got to yeah. tell you, I like your show, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so I guess it, as long as it's tasteful, I guess it's tasteful. It was tasteful. There was never a, a non tasteful thing. There was one guy okay. that was just like, I like hard lore. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, like, well, that's fine. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so Gates to Hell was opening every single night. Mm. Uh, Louisville Death Metal. Ryan, LDB. Ryan, LDB, At the Helm. Mm -hmm. Very sweet group of lads playing hard-ass riffs. Uh, having really strong opening sets every single night, which is not easy to do. No, that's crazy. So, and your your sweet young boy Trey, my my sweet lad, <laughs> the youngest Garris Trey, uh, filling on on drums, doing a great job. I think he l reluctantly had to learn how to blast just to do this to blast beat. So I'm looking <laughs> at him like six weeks into blasting for the first time, and he's doing great. Oh wow, awesome. yeah, they're fucking sick. Um, Vomit Fourth was two or four every night. I'm, I like I'm I'm obsessed with them. You know, yeah, yeah. In a way, yeah. I'm specifically obsessed with Kane, the singer. He's maybe the best front man in the world. In the whole entire world. Explain, elaborate, please. He's, I I like he's like an improv god. You know, ah. like I can see him having these thoughts and saying them spur of the moment. His banter, yeah, is like out of control. Pro. He's firing it all on all cylinders. Hmm. Uh, and then it would be us every night. Did I say one of four when Gates of Hell played? It was one of five. Sorry. Yeah. Which is an yeah. even tougher spot to be in. Oh, and yeah. And to dude. deliver in, which they did every single time. Uh, I'm trying to think. So of you like, were right in the middle, sandwiched. Right by in the two, middle every night, which is the best. That's like perfect. sandwiched by two, two halves of a tour that are like finely tuned so finely tuned which we yeah. were for sure not this first night but people said we were <laughs> you'd be lying but i appreciate it um vomit fourth does a wall of death yeah like most nights yeah and this night it was like unbelievable Did people, people die hurt in, in walls of death they died they well, there's well, there was death they, they wall have of death. Died. yeah <laughs> they don't I call don't, it that for i don't know the protocol do you keep going or do you run yeah into yeah somebody? And just like, attack them. How do you like at the at like Vakken, How do you yeah. not get like trampled? Like I how does that? that I think how does the, that? The goal is trampling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would need to muster the Rohirrim and straight up we're plowing through them orcs. You know, Absolutely. like there's no. Let's see any uh, Jersey anecdote photos I can find. You know what's great about New Jersey what's is that? just knowing that you're going to eat good. Yeah. And New Jersey is really has risen on my personal yeah. it, it, feelings of, of just like they have diners. That's all yeah, I ever I, want. We needed a diner. I mean, for like we went to Wawa when we landed just because it was late and yeah, Wawa rocks. And then woke up, got a diner, went to Wawa again for dinner. Yeah. Brought Cruelty where they tried Wawa for the first time. <sighs> Loved it. Outstanding. Outstanding, which makes me what, think what, now I should say uh, every band, Great to Hell is not yet. So we'll see. Oh, they did. Okay. Nice. Uh, every band told me what their three favorite places to eat on this whole tour were. Okay. On their whole tour. So not, yeah, not the just. the whole thing. Okay. So I'm going to break that down now. I'm, first, I'm going to show you Cruelty trying Wawa for the first time. I get a live review. Wawa's iced tea lemonade. This is beast. Yeah. What is that? Just Coke. Bye. Panini? Yeah, roasted taki. Okay. Traditional. Let's give it a shot. Mm. Wow. The shaka. This rocks. That. Huge review. What is that? Soup. Soup? Chicken noodles. Do we like it? Yeah. The best. We like it. Chicken noodles. So what do we think of Wawa? Good? Good. Cruelty loves Wawa. Look at Manny back there. He loves. <laughs> yeah. Wawa. Wawa. Wawa is awesome. Good? Yeah. <laughs> this has been Cruelty Tries Wawa. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Did you get that diet half and half? 
I got the last <laughs> bottle of Diet Half. Oh, bless. The first, the first night. Second yeah. night, it was the fridge was fully stocked because that was when Manny, the drummer, the insane drummer of Cruelty, took one sip of the half and half and just went, "Oh God." <laughs> I um I no longer choose sides in the Wawa sheets debate. No need. And no need. you know, if I had to choose a side at this point, I think it's Wawa. But that's I think that's just because that's where you went last. Maybe I think I think there's there's layers to this conversation. There there is for sure. She has just, the fried shit down. Yeah. It's oh, like the, so the, the treats and, and shareables and apps and yeah. just like Fun things, sheets, clears. <laughs> yeah. But a Wawa, like hoagie. The Sammies. Yeah, the homie. The hoagies, yeah. The homies are, the <laughs> hoagie is like legit deli quality good. I'm just you, saying in this battle of North and South Union versus Confederacy, I'm Missouri. I'm out. Sure. No, no, no. Don't, I, 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 is, I don't care. In this case, both are, if they're next to each other, I'm going to both. Dude. You know? <laughs> Really well said. That's a simple excellent point. I'm getting That's, a well, I'm getting a half and half iced tea. Yeah. I'm getting a fucking grinder. A pepperoni pizza sandwich from Wawa. Yeah. And then yeah. uh and then some Wisconsin fried, cheese bites. From, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From sheets. Perfect. And I'm gonna perfect. have to, I'm gonna be like perfect meal. <laughs> <laughs> Best uh, meal so that, tour. That was most that was most of Jersey. Luigi's was good. There was a like Korean taco place. Oh down a, the street. A fusion? Yeah, that I didn't try, but everybody said it was really good. But if you're playing in Asbury, if you or, you know, for any reason are playing in Asbury Park coming up, mm. check out that Korean fusion place. I heard it's dope. Mm. You going to break down what they said? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, top, the top three. Cruelty's favorite. Maybe places. do them last because okay. it's going to be the best. Okay, the well, then here's Kane from Vomit Forth letting us know <laughs> his favorite places that they ate on tour. Hey, what's up? This is Kane here. From internationally ranked touring artist Vomit Forth. Um, you're also talking to someone in the top 50 of A7X Mosh Pit survivors. <laughs> uh, top three places to eat on tour Hot Spot Barbecue in Pensacola, Florida. Incredible. Mm -hmm. They gave us free cookies, and if you recommend people, they give you other free things. It's a very good place. Um, Misoya Ramen in Toronto, the Toronto location, uh, was incredible. I took uh, my uh, 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 better half, Delicia, and I took cruelty there, and they did admit mm -hmm. that it was um, close to, if not a little bit better, than the ramen in Japan. What? Uh, I, I did just lie about that. We did take them there, and we <laughs> did like it, though. Uh, but it was really, really good. Um, and then there's another kind of smaller chain, but they have like, they have like a couple locations, uh, Raisin Cane's, um, <laughs> chicken place. Very good. I loved it. Um, best places to eat on tour, Vomit 4th edition. He was also explaining to me at McDonald's when we went one night that he gets the combo number 2A because it's his right. <laughs> All right, we're here with Kane from Bonnet Forth trying McDonald's. <laughs> this what is, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's everything I thought it was going to be and more. Uh, I got the 2A. Tell me about the 2A. <laughs> it's your right. <laughs> <laughs> is it gone? No, uh, no it's never going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to pry it from my cold dead Let's hands. get in there. Let's try it. Mmm. Oh, oh, mm. oh my goodness. Exploding. Exploding. And it's my right. <laughs> That's pretty fucking good. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, here is Trey Garris, uh, who was filling in for, for Gates to Hell right. with his picks. Let's see what this fucker's saying. So I forgot to take a video with the rest of Gates to Hell, but I think collectively we agree that Tallulah's in Asbury Park. Mm. Um. We went to a Brazilian steakhouse chain called Texas Day Brazil, which was really good. And um, McDonald's has got to be the third one. <laughs> He's your young boy. He knows he, exactly what wrong? to say. He knows what I like, man. He's right. Dude, I fucking then, love Texas Day Brazil. I've never been. Oh, they just keep piling it on. Oh, thank you, buddy. 
Uh, here are Cruelty's picks. Uh, Haru, who was their fill-in guitar player. Crispy, crunchy chicken. Okay. I don't know where that is or what it is. <laughs> Papa John's. Yeah, they fuck. They love it, dude. And then Wawa, parentheses, meatball sandwich. Dude, that's the one. It's so fucking It's so good. It's so and good. And if you're, uh, when I was just obsessed with keto, you can d- do a platter. Right. And just do it without bread. And so it's good. actually, like, you kind of have to avoid the sauce a little bit. Well, it's honestly, Bo, most yes, meatballs sir. are made with breadcrumbs, too. I looked up the nutritional facts on theirs, and it's pretty decently awesome. within range. Huge. Yeah. Manny, who is their insane drummer. Crispy, crunchy mm-hmm. chicken again. What? Where is this place? I don't know. I've never even heard of it. Uh, Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he's insane. Yeah. And Canes. Okay. I think they have Denny's in Tokyo. I definitely have seen one in Tokyo. I'm almost positive. But whatever. All right. Okay. Sena plays mm-hmm. bass. Mm-hmm. Wing Stop. Yes. Popeyes. Yes. Dude. Papa John's. Wow. Yeah. Dude, Papa needs to. Papa needs to fucking do something with. Get it over to that with cruelty. fucking island, man. I know. Get over there. They're dying for you. Zuma, so yes. the vocalist and guitar player. Wingstop. Yes. Canes. Wow. Papa John's. Papa John's. <laughs> Wingstop. I love the respect for Wingstop. Huge. We know how I feel about, about Canes. Yeah. It's just not made for me, and that's fine. Papa John's. Is borderline of I, I do you fuck with Papa John's? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I forget where we put them on our. I'm list. not. I think it was a C, just like right in the middle. I'm yeah. not like ordering it regularly or anything. But out of the big Domino's, uh, Pizza Hut, is there another one? <laughs> Little Caesars, like it's really Domino's, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, and I would say it, that's third. It's third for sure. Yeah. Okay. But. All right. Sometimes when you don't, when you get it after not getting it for a while, it hits pretty good. The butter garlic sauce, which Shocking. is vegan. It's crazy that you like that. I know. I know it is, but I tried creamy. it once and I was like, oh, I get this. It is a little creamy, but in my brain, if it's just butter and oil, it's really just oil and garlic. That's all it is. But then I, by that same. I feel like there's some mayo in there. No, no, no. It's, it's vegan. Oh. It's crazy. Oh, so it's what kind of butter is in there? It, exactly, it's margarine. It's fake butter. Like, it's like, like you movie. can't believe it. Yeah, can't um, believe it's not. But by by my same rationale, all mayo is is oil and egg whites. The good shit. There's no. I have no. There's no rhyme or reason. Right. I got you. I got you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Long Island was next. Oh, I know. You put you. you <laughs> I don't want to bury the venue. Amh. But that is my fucking. Yeah. 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 The bane of my existence, definitely. Amityville Music Hall in Amityville, famously with the sign across the street that says, Welcome to Amityville, welcomes you. <laughs> um, we dined in at Taco Bell at 11 a.m. this day, mm, mm. the old way, you know? Mm-hmm. The boys sitting at a table. Yeah. Try, the Beefy Crunch is back right now. Lovely. So, Love that. Did you, did you try the Berea thing? I haven't tried. I didn't see it until after I ordered. Mm, it's pretty good. I didn't realize that's what the whole like scowl promotional thing was all about. Was the neither the, like, did I like the grilled and, cheese birria taco thing? Yeah, it's pretty good. It looks fucking awesome. It's pretty fucking. Good. There we go. All right, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was probably the most people I've ever seen at AMH. Wow. Yeah. So th- just to the only reason I have a, even a, a slight issue with yeah. AMH is just because the only way to load in or out, like if you're done, if you're the in the view. middle, yeah. yeah, and you're loading out, you're walking through an entire show. Yeah. And, and like, they're not I feel moving. Like, <laughs> and they're not moving. And yeah. I feel, and like merch is in kind of a, you know. So merch is just, outside. Merch is in the back. Oh, okay. Which was great. Def- dude, I think the last time we played there, it was like monsoon pouring rain yeah. outside. So, so no got, one's outside. Oh, man. But that's my only beef. And I will say, going back to Jersey, it is fucking humid. Oh, yeah, it's swampy out there. 
Uh, swampy out there, swampy in there. I'm like, this is this affirmed me like I am a wet motherfucker. So let me ask you, was it manscape time? One hundred percent every day. <laughs> every day it was manscape time. Mm. The reviver I had to revive, but that doesn't make me any less wet. You know, no, it sure doesn't. Mm-mm. And like mm. I, I, my fingers were like Dennis the Menace pruned, you know, Fuck. wrinkled up by the time we're done playing every night. Jeez. Picks are slapping, slipping all over the place. Yeah, I hate that. I never dealt with this before. Mm. I'm a singer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you played uh, guitar and got saved for I did, but I never got that wet. Yeah. I got to go out for a dead yeah, body, right, so I'm going right, crazy. Right, right. I'm sweating my ass off. Uh, I didn't know I, I could get that wet, really. Yeah. Like, yeah, just like noises if I whip my shirt around. (laughs) Ugh, I don't look forward to that. Anyway, uh, I looked at monkeys the whole drive to AMH. If anybody knows where I can meet a monkey, Hmm. please, I'm dying. Monkey or ape? I'll take an ape, but I'm really into monkeys. Okay. I like, you know, the great ape family, I I have great respect for. Yeah. Chimps, orangutans, you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Monkeys are just like I feel I feel one degree from them, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I know what I I said something about this on Twitter, I think, but like when I got my new Pelican case that holds my pedals and my amp. Yeah, yeah. Figuring out how to do the lashes and stuff. Yeah. Was like I'm I'm a monkey. Yeah, you're I'm, uh, ju- I'm I'm minutes from monkey jeans. 2001 you know? Space Odyssey. I just that I was just there. Yeah. Genetically. Wow. <laughs> somehow I'm here. So it was really inspiring to see them, you know, they like wear flannels and jeans and stuff and like hug you. I got to be one. <laughs> okay. I think I'm sure we can make that happen. I'm, I, 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 I please if you're listening and you know where I can meet a monkey, like I'm di- I'm dying to do it. A little guy that will like me, you know? Yeah. How is AMH? Really cool. Um, Long Island is another place where it's like, we're going to eat. Oh. Like, we're eating, you know? Yeah. Uh, Scanlon, who booked the show. Thanks for Scanlon. Shout out to Scanlon for booking the show, which (laughs) if you've never said that. Yeah. You ain't lived. (laughs) If you've never said on a microphone, thanks to Scanlon for booking the show. You're nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just but it's, that should be, everybody should aspire to <clears throat> thank Scanlon for booking the show. Mm-hmm. It's a rite of passage, you know. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again in a month. I want, like, I had a plan while I was talking to him. I was thinking of opening a coffee shop here called Scanlon. <laughs> <laughs> In Long Island or no, at here home? In, the, in the valley. In California, just yeah. called Scanlon. Scanlon. Not even Scanlon what? coffee. Just. Why do you guys call it Scan? Huh? Thanks. Thanks to Scan. Like if we book, a, if we like cater a show, it can be like, thanks to Scanlon for catering the show. <laughs> 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 this was a whole conversation with myself and Dan Seeley and Aaron Warman mm. about just people th- and Becca later about just people thanking Scanlon. <laughs> Just making my license plate like a vanity plate that's just Scanlon. Scanlon. <laughs> anyway, John. For context, John Scanlon uh, is a fellow from Long Island. He's Who does shows all over the country at this point. Yeah, yeah. I think he's involved in FYA Fest along yeah. with Bob Wilson. What number? Big Bob. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is a great show. It's. This is where I need to state that Sanguasugabog is maybe the best sounding live entity Ooh. in in music, period. Wow. Uh, to the point where I thought they had their own front of house guy for the first two shows. Really? And they don't. I love that. Like the guy, the front of house guy at every venue when doing their sound check is standing there going like, I'm fucking. Oh, he sounded like he was, the, every night the guy was like, this sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Which never happens, you know? Uh, no. The front of wow. house guy on the front of house microphone is being like, you guys sound amazing. 
<laughs> and I'll tell you why. They don't have a bass player. Right. It's all guitar. It's all guitar run through two bass amps. So they're mm-hmm. both guitar players are running a drop tuned guitar signal yeah. to bass amps. So it sounds like they have two guitar players and two bass players playing perfectly in sync. Yeah, it's going to be as tight as possible. It is crazy. One time, uh, it was the Sound and Fury that got shut down because of the motorcycle incident. Yeah. Harm's Way left, and we jumped on a Nacho show in L.A. that night. Mm-hmm. And at that particular, uh, for that run that Nachos were doing, Drew, the bass player, had uh, fucked up his back, so he wasn't there. So Andy did exactly that. And did it sound unbelievable? It, it sounded, well, I mean, like, they're, <clears throat> Drew and Andy are, like, right. very competent musicians as it is, but it sounded just like, it was just like a crazy unlock moment in my brain where it's like, you can kind of do anything. You can figure something People out. People have been doing the MacBook running the tracks thing, but, like, I yeah. feel like this was the, the coolest way possible to not have a bass player. Yeah. And then to have a non-kick drum. That goes a long way. Of course. It's crazy, because when you're hearing it, on stage you're still hearing the kick somehow Mm -hmm. but it's not burying everything Mm -mm. so like standing on stage and watching them is very pleasant or like even from front of house it's just sounds perfect in a satisfying way and not in like a no diss to them but like when i saw ghost Mm -hmm. it sounded just like the record in a way where it's it's like like, what's the point what's the point i love them you know, I I, yeah, I genuinely love the band. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big, and like I've said before, I don't care for live music if I can't participate in, in in some way. Yeah, and I think that was the moment where I was like, oh, okay, this is just the album. They're just yeah, they just they might as well just press play. Might as well just press play. Um, I love. And you got to figure that the the kick drum is going to be, since it's essentially triggered. Yeah, that l- mixing it live is really easy because easy. you don't have to be like, Oh, it's a fast part. So he's hitting a little softer. Yeah. Or, oh, you don't have to worry you know. about dynamics or anything. It's no. just like, there it is. Yeah. It sounds Interesting. so good. Interesting. <laughs> Great. Interesting. I mean, every band on the tour is, was that di- they're on week five or six. Yeah. Or so they're, so they're so in. fucking dialed in. Um, and they're all the- hard as shit and playing exactly what I like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like death metal from the perspective of a person who grew up listening to hardcore. The best. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other anecdotes from Long Island. What'd you Let's eat in, if... in Long Island? Uh, Scanlon ordered pizza from from a spot nearby. I had these like square vodka slices. Oh, dude, I I know that place. The what what right was it next? called? It's called like oh, Mike's or something. Okay, maybe not that place then, but dude crazy uh, all the pizza there is fucking awesome so dude I, I, I long island i don't know why i think it's because of all of our friends are from long island yeah. that i just like love it it's, <laughs> i like it, adore it long island is the valley yeah wow it's the same it's the same thing it's right outside of the biggest city you just blew my mind like the people are the same that's like that's kind of why the valley and long island oh. got there was a, a strong connection very quickly wow it's the same place yeah, you just blew my mind. That makes total sense. It's pretty dope. <clears throat> uh, next day was Connecticut, which you my, went home. The motherland. Um, How'd it feel? Which what'd you say? How'd it feel to be home? Oh, fucking awesome! And I'll tell you <laughs> why. We left bright and early that morning. We st- we drove. We didn't stay in Long Island. We we drove to New Haven so that we could wake up and do the give. Give Miles and George the full the tour Connecticut pizza experience. Yeah, fucking. I mean, and you did yourself a favor because Long Island. One thing about Long Island is that it might be the worst traffic I've ever been in. Getting out of there, life. not at night, is <sighs> it's like the worst place in America to drive. Yeah, it's there's crazy. that one bridge. One. <laughs> I don't know bridge. what fucking bridge. And it you is, can't but. drive a van on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 There's no. You're not sorry, allowed God. to bring a trailer on it. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Um, so we drove to New Haven, woke up, and you know, to the to the to the pizza aware listeners, we went to Sally's and Frank Pepe's, which I learned it's not Pepe, it's Pepe Italians. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, to the unaware, Sally's and Frank Pepe's are competitor pizza joints in Connecticut of 
And New Haven is like a pizza, a pizza capital of the entire world. Mm. Like the never style. had it. I beats. never had it. A P I Z Z A. I beats. I beats. Yeah. Um, and we finally put it to the test. We had we had fresh pies from both. Sally's was like an hour and a half wait to get inside, which we did, but we ordered Frank Pepe's in advance. Smart. Ate it in line. Wow. And so it was even, and I will say, even eating Frank Pepe's fresh, we were like, this is good pizza. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good pizza. Everybody was like, this is good. Sally's. Smashed. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I mean, I I saw all the responses and stuff, obviously. And even on the the, our TikTok, it was like, yeah, of course. (laughs) You know, it was like very... Sally's. Sally's is crazy. Wow. I, I gotta I, try if, if I if that was there, if yeah. that was down the street from me, you'd have a problem. I would have a serious problem. But I'd also <laughs> have a solution. You know? Yeah. It's like it's like kickback. Wow. Kickback is the band where if I don't know what to listen to, I listen to kickback. Huh. I just go, I don't know. I'll do, I'll put kickback on. And then you have a great time. Sally's is the th- it would be the thing where it's like Oh, I don't I have don't an idea for dinner. I'm, obviously, I'm getting Sally's. <laughs> but maybe the inconvenience of getting Sally's makes that not a thing. Do they do delivery or pizzas to go? Uh, they do, but not at like prime time. Yeah, right. Dude, they can't. They can't they sustain can't. that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Which is fucking wow. good for that. <laughs> yeah, and also it, that that's like that ensures a, a level of like quality control because yeah. when places like that. Open oh second location they're always going to compare it it's always going to be whatever you know uh, a lot of people said modern yeah Have modern is the that? place I, I I that's a newer place on the same street gotcha that I haven't gotten to try it I'm excited gotcha. to. and then Zuparties I guess is the other one okay hmm. uh so we're playing the Webster Underground in Hartford Connecticut this night how do you feel about that location oh it's insane it's insane yeah it's that's fucking the last time we were there, battleground. after after the show, a, after everyone was gone, we were waiting to settle. Literally, an argument was outside that was ended by someone saying, I'll be back with my gun. Yeah. And all of us just went into the venue. No, you can hear it from anywhere. That, anywhere in that zone is that, like there was a I was talking to Sean outside after the show. Sean Martin came, beloved oh. first ever <laughs> guest on Hard, on Hard Lore. Um, and we just hear pop, 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 pop. And Sean just goes, that'll solve it. <laughs> like, yep, does it every time. Hmm. It was like, oh, all right, it's over. Yeah, uh, the location's pretty wild. It's fun. I like that space. Yeah, like it's the, sick. The showroom is cool. Have you ever been to the big room? Yeah. It's crazy. That's the first live music I ever saw in my life was there. I, I, I do feel silly asking that now. Yeah. Where, what was it? What was it? Yeah, that you saw there. Hey, Breed. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Pretty, yeah. Uh, and then other than that, the other first show I ever went to was Creed and Jerry Cantrell. Whoo! Yeah. Like Jerry Cantrell solo? It's Jerry Cantrell's solo playing full Alice Alice Chain Chains. sets. Fuck this is yeah, post Lane passing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hell of a lineup. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking dope, dude. And that was at the time where if I walked into King Philip Middle School wearing a, a Creed shirt, somebody's like, Sick fucking shirt, dude. Yeah, of course. It's hard as dude, fuck. I, if you're pretending like you didn't like Creed back in the day, you're a fucking They liar. had tracks, man. Of course. Of they course. They made God cool. <laughs> so let's go there. Let's fucking go Unbelievable. Uh, I have never seen the Webster Underground look like this. How do you mean? Jam-packed. Wow, really? Never seen it. Where, wow. like, you can't get in when a band is playing. Did you have access to the green room that's like up the street? I no. I mean, maybe, oh, okay. but I didn't care. It was I didn't even bother. Yeah, okay. Um, the green room rocks. That's what I'm saying. Like like gates to hell opening. It was fucking ass to ankles, wall to wall, slammed. Damn. So is this? Uh, did they say every show was like this on the tour? I think they said for the most part. Yeah, dude. So is is hardcore 
and adjacent music just like back in a I, big way? You know, I you I could say yes, but I also think Sanguasugabog is like mm-hmm. there it's very much a thing and they're drawing everyone. So sick. and that's the cool part. And that not only are they drawing everyone, but they're drawing people who are accepting of whatever you want to do there. Yeah. It's not the guys who are going to punch you in the head for spin kicking. It's the guys who are like, that was fucking crazy. Dudes were doing karate in there. <laughs> I might have wow. to learn some. Uh, That's awesome. So that that is cool. And I've never seen it like this, ever. Truly. No, um, I, I haven't. No way. Where wow. To the point where when we're, we're about to start, I'm playing, I'm like Webster Underground. Like, who knows how that's going to be? Because I've played mm-hmm. there... I've played good shows there that weren't that weren't that good, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're like setting up, and I just look up, and it's like front to back full. So that felt that hit me, dude, because that's full that's, circle. That's so awesome. Yeah, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure, big time. So it, 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 I mean, we've played there. I've played there three times now, I think total, and it really hits me every time. Yeah, because that's home. That's home. That's like. That's birthplace, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, this, yeah. the Valley is obviously home, but I've, I've grown up in this position where I get to kind of have two homes, mm-hmm. you know? I get to have childhood home and mm-hmm. home, home. So that's, that's childhood home. And then like Lumpy's there and slides. My man. Sliding I f- around. I fucking love him. And then Alex Casey, Streets of Hate. I got <sighs> I to gotta give a specific shout out to Alex Casey, Streets of Hate. No other record label CEO <laughs> is is in the pit for that many bands cons- consistently. You know, the yeah. man is the man is everywhere, and he's moshing. Which, to be fair, Lumpy is too, but I think Alex is by far of all record label CEOs in the world most consistent spin kicker. <laughs> Like his well, his pit to pit to chill ratio is out of control. It's, it's just nuts. It, the pit the pit uh, percentage is dwarfing the chill percentage. Even for you as a as a, a really, record label CEO as spin a brand, kicker, brand new record label CEO, <laughs> Cosmic <laughs> Joke, uh, twelve inch coming soon. Uh, yeah, agreed. <laughs> what else can I say about Connecticut? Josta's Uncle Mike works at Sally's making pies. Unbelievable. Say hello to my Uncle Mike. <laughs> Is his name Mike Josta? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, his last name's not Josta. I Shanahan. know, I know, I know. I know. Michael Shanahan, probably. I ain't never heard nothing more Irish in my life than no. Michael Shanahan. Michael. He makes pizzas down at Sally's. <sighs> Call him uh, Sally. We, we stop. <laughs> We stopped at uh, our childhood apartment building to see if the Sepultura logo that my brother, that Taylor painted when he was in seventh grade was still there. It looks great. It too. looks like newly, <laughs> it looks like restored. Yeah. What's going on with that? I don't know. He killed that shit. Dude. <laughs> uh, cruelty trying New Haven style pizza was cool. Yeah. They liked it. They loved it. I noticed that none of them said Sally's or whatever. They, they um, weren't. They weren't with us for that. Yeah, but they ate it. They ate Frank. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. But what I'm uh, but what I'm saying is they didn't say that on their top three list. There's no. I mean, it was old, it was in our van for hours when they oh, tried. Oh yeah. It, it right, was just right, kind of right, like, right. hey, we're gonna throw this away. Do you guys want some? Oh, I should film you doing it. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then okay. after he said the Papa John's are better thing, I stopped rolling, and he was like, "This is pretty good, actually." <laughs> <laughs> and it was in our van for like five hours. So. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, drove overnight to Albany. And at midnight that evening, I got the notification that the In Love There's No Law Redux went up. Totally, yeah. totally forgot any of that was happening. Oh, shit. I had nothing. It was like, oh, shit, that's happening today? Uh, <laughs> I just forgot. Like, I obviously, we yeah. set it up, and I knew yeah. that it was happening. But, like, we... That remix remaster has been done for quite some time. Yeah, yeah. So I just it sounds crazy. Taylor did a, Taylor did it's, surgery on that motherfucker. 
It sounds so fucking good. I, I a beat it when I, you first sent it to me, and it was like, what the I, how? Man. how? It, he just has grown. He's as just a, be, he's just gotten that much better. Yeah. And like yeah. you would, after ten <laughs> years, you would hope a guy. Yeah, of course, of course. And it's like this is actual documented physical sonic proof that he has. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to think that like all of those songs together is one hour, and we were so scared of it being. It was like this is too much. We got to cut all this. <laughs> yeah, when but Mike. I think I think for the sake of like the flow of the records, we picked the right nine songs and absolutely. But it's cool that that stuff's out there digitally because I haven't had those bonus tracks on a computer ever. Mm. I've never had access to just listen to them. Wow. I think I just didn't want it, maybe. Hmm. And now it's fun. <laughs> now it's out there. But yeah, that was that was that was a special thing to happen while we were in Troy of all places. Yeah, yeah. At and you went to Closed Casket, right? Went to Closed Casket headquarters for the first time. Which like that's another poetic thing. Thinking about uh -huh. like where he started as a label when he put out isolation. Mm -hmm. When he put out in Love, There's No Law, he was doing everything out of his living room. Yeah, we slept in his living room next to boxes. Surrounded by boxes. His yeah. bathroom had record boxes in it. And now, like, he's able to finally be at that point where he separates the two things. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a very, a very poetic full circle day and, and weekend, I would say. Did you pick these dates purposefully? Yeah, they want us to do the whole thing. And that just can never happen, right? For for any of our bands, really. Um, but we saw these and we were like, "Ooh, okay, <laughs> that's so good." That's so, awesome. did you eat in Albany? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start there. So okay. first off, no hyperbole here, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to Justin for for ungatekeeping this. We, we got coffee at a place called Jacob Alejandro in Troy, New York. Yeah. One of the best cups of all time. Cold? Oh, yeah. I got two things, Bo. I got my usual mm -hmm. cold brew, oat milk, a little bit of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. And then I got a specialty thing that they do, a Little creme treat. brulee latte. Oh, <laughs> dude. I fucking love creme brulee. Dude. I damn near shitted myself on the spot. It's a miracle I didn't. Miraculous. Sucked both <laughs> down in record time. Mm. And I was just sitting there thinking like, why is this in Troy, New York? Yeah. What is it about Troy, New York that keeps making these amazing things? <laughs> yeah, I, I took good. one sip of a, a creme brulee latte in Troy, New York and thought to myself, I could live here. <laughs> This is a, it. A latte is so good, it makes you think, I could live here. Dude, I love creme brulee so much. I, I, I'm going to a baseball game later with my dad, and I literally just thought, like, where can we get creme brulee before this fucking baseball game? Like, you I, just see, put that in my brain. I wasn't a huge creme brulee guy until Paris just a couple months ago. Oh, man. Yeah. Cracking They're, that it's fucker great. with a little spoon. Dude, and then it's <laughs> great because most steakhouses will have them. And it's good. And if you're eating, if you're eating at a good steakhouse, they're gonna have good creme brulee because yeah. it's like traditional. Oh well, God. I guess I talked to some bakers after being our buddy Haley, who sings an absent father, mm -hmm. uh, is like an incredible baker. And I was like, "Listen, I'll buy all the stuff if you come and teach me how to make creme brulee." Mm -hmm. And they were like, "That's one of the easiest things." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's custard, and you put it in a, and you fire it up. Well, they you put it. What do they call it? It's when it's in water, and then you put that in the oven in the little thing. Mm. That's how it cooks, and then you toast the top, and that's it. Very easy. Oh my god! Yeah, Unreal, outstanding. Dude. Yeah, I totally forgot about all the others and lost stuff, which <laughs> made for a very funny morning where I was like, I should type something up. Uh, <laughs> and then that made me very like, it made me emotional to just yeah. think I hadn't really processed it all. Yeah. Uh, then we got Dinosaur Barbecue with Cruelty. How was that? Here is Cruelty's thoughts on Dinosaur Barbecue. All right, Cruelty, we're at Dinosaur Barbecue. They're going to try deviled eggs for the first You pick that up with your hand. Pick it up. Get in there, brother. Deviled egg. 
Oh lord, it's a messy one. Yeah. <coughs> who's who's gonna bite first? Oh shit. Mmm. Yeah. This is awesome. He likes, man, he likes he took it. A little bite, man. Man, he took a little, a little bite. bite. <laughs> they housed it. Cool, he's eating good. We got barbecue. <laughs> Look at this big plate. Let's try some uh, some brisket. Brisket, rib, football. Delicious. What do we got here? Uh, We're in heaven. So We're in heaven? So good. Yes. Give me a big bite. No. Big bite. Ooh. Oh yeah, oh. Manny, give me a big bite. Big bite. Oh yeah, you sick bastard. There it is, dinosaur barbecue. Very nice. Love those guys. Just unbelievable. And, and this is, I can let the record show. I've said this on the show dozens of times now. I ain't never left the place with underwear. And? I made it. Wow. I made Congrats, it. Congrats, man. It's a big weekend. And I know this isn't a week. This isn't an AG1 week, but I think a lot of that has to do with AG1. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. We'll tell you more about it next week. But this <laughs> week, we can tell you about, we can tell you about, Manscaped. Yeah. Wow. Woo! Tell me about touring with Manscaped. Man, Another first. I I finally, I'm surrounded by the stinkiest motherfuckers you ever saw, you ever seen. You know? Mm. They're on week five, though. It's fine. Mm. Like, you're gonna stink. Mm. Some aspects of me, I'm sure, stink. Feet, maybe. But luckily, I had a product to cure that. Mm -hmm. The Manscaped Foot Duster. But no. Dude, I love the Foot Duster. I was spraying Big Trey's time. nuts with a Reviver from afar just to be like, you'll thank me later. You're going to need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Crawling that if, under. Ev if every touring musician was was traveling with Manscaped, like a full gear of Manscaped. Dude, the Reviver and the Preserver. <laughs> you're and good. And body wash. If you had that. Oh, my God, dude. You're unstoppable. Yeah, you're unstoppable. That was basically my kit. That's awesome. And ain't nobody, can't, can't nobody tell me I stank on any of them shows. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's all because of Code Hard Lore, manscaped.com. 20% off, free shipping. Free shipping. Get you some Manscaped. Stop, stop stanking. No, you don't need it's to. It's a choice. They also just came out with a brand new beard guy, like a like a full shaver. Oh. Like a dedicated, it's called the Handyman, and it's like a dedicated shaver. Trimmer? That's pretty cool. No, like a like a to skin oh, like an electric shaver. shaver, an electric Damn. shaver. That's the word. Yeah, those scare me. But and since yeah. Manscaped is making it, I ain't scared. Wow. Uh, it's also a whatnot top. Yeah. <laughs> when are we I doing? I swear whatnot? to God, I swear to God, we're coming back. <laughs> Not this Friday. Not this Friday. Not tomorrow that's, that's because it's eight one eight. Big day. It's a big day. <laughs> uh, but in in all, it's the end of August. We will be back on whatnot. We've got yeah. so many things for you. So many, truly so many things. So, so many new exclusive one of one things to give away. Should I show one? I have it right yeah, here. Yeah, let's see it. I want this thing. I'm jealous. I know, I know. Wow. Wow. So we have, thanks to our friends of the show from Kanga Coolers, a one of one hard lore cooler. Yeah, what the fuck? We know it's crazy. It's huge. You know what's awesome about this? It's got the little magnetic so you can reach in. Dude, get this your, couldn't have been three of three. I right. Reach in, get your Diet Coke, and it's magnetic. Damn. So that's, gonna, that's going right on the what? I'm entering that giveaway. I'll tell you what. You're going to have to beat me for that. That's crazy. Yeah, what not is really sick. Click the link in the description below for 15 bucks off your first purchase. Come join us at the end of this month. We're going to do a live what not. It's like an auction, also like a... Live episode. Live episode that nobody ever gets to watch again. So you get to be part of that, ask questions, do whatever, man. It's the best. Also, let me just say, Harm's Way just announced a big full U.S. tour. What? With Fleshwater, Ingrown, and Jive Bomb. How about that? That's going to be October 
18th through November 16th, which is somebody's birthday. <laughs> and um, it's full US. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm like really genuinely so excited to tour again. It's I, I, so- I, I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait for you to be yeah, done yeah. and to maybe see you in the middle at some show at a show that we can talk about uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And I just uh, got confirmation that that when this episode comes out, the tour will have been announced yesterday. Tickets, tickets. are on sale tomorrow, Friday. That's right. So get your tickies, please. Get tickets for FYA as well. <sighs> and I'm my- playing. You're playing. Hard Lore is going to be there. Oh, yeah. I for- <laughs> Dude, I forgot you were playing. Yeah, Weapon X is playing. <sighs> it's going to be awesome. Life is good. Uh, Dinosaur Barbecue, I finally left without shit myself. Can't believe it. Which was huge. Like, real, like, and nobody believed me. But Justin was there every time. He was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep this between you and Keep, me? Yeah, between you and me, he shits his pants. <laughs> That's going to hate this. Like 12 people will enjoy yeah, that joke. will be like, yeah, that sounds just like him. Uh, but we played Empire Underground, which I've never played before. Have you played there? Mm-mm. No. Really cool spot. Uh, we made like a Dying Breed ripoff shirt. Oh, for, yeah. For that body. was fucking awesome. That shirt was dope. Gone, dude. Beautiful. Which, that's where hardcore is now, Bo. You can make an exclusive shirt for Albany. And sell them, the dude. Hatebreed prognosticators. Yeah, but not. But that's hatebreed. I know, no, no. I know, I know. But like, I would look at that model. Yeah, the business model of right. I survived the Chicago hatebreed sure. mosh pit, and being like, how does but that? They're work? playing to two to five thousand people. I know. I'm just this saying. I, I'm. I'm like wondering. Like, does that work? Yeah. And, and it's I, crazy. Know, I think a little. I think a little bit of that is where we are, and I hope a little bit of that is people from Albany knowing that we yeah. we fly the flag everywhere we go. I, it literally just dawned on me as you were waving your flag that dying breed and dead body have the same initials. I didn't even catch that. Oh, you didn't think about it? That's why the DB on the back. I I get it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> no, I, I, I did I not. I did not. Did not catch that. Uh, really cool venue. It was very, like, saw a lot of familiar faces that have been coming to see all bands for a long time. Yeah, yeah, cool. And this was, by this time, this is probably the most styled in that we were. Yeah. I'm getting, I gotta get used to, like, I'm, I can, ah, all day, but, like, actually physically moving. I'm getting It's that. weird. Um, it takes time. And there's, like, certain riffs where you gotta get it in. Yep. Absolutely. Whenever you're going bum, 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 that's, that's when, when you going. can go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really enjoyed the clip I saw of you and Taylor headbanging like identically, <laughs> just really? like in unison the same way. It was very, it was touching. The riff, that's what the riff called for. <laughs> uh, Gates to Hell was, I was like really solid that night. I remember Trey didn't like, did not nay a stick missed a note, you know? Damn. Just perfect. They're they're super dialed in. Uh, tight man. Vomit fourth starts their set. Kane, dude, he's so good at being a front man. I, I don't know if I can find <laughs> videos of this, but yeah. he's basically just like, I'm not playing until you move up. And there's a lot of people in the room, but I think is being in Albany, it's like, this is going to be violent, so I'm going to yeah, yeah, get out of the yeah. way. He's just like, I don't want to play to you if you're not going to stand in front. And his, endi- and his entire system of, of commanding people is so pro. He's very funny. How do you feel about like I, I if you can pull it off, I think it's the best move. What? Uh to come to like get people to move because like the move up, move up is like so fucking, you know, played it's out. It's a it's a meme, you know? It's a yeah, it's literally a meme. And yeah. it's like embarrassing, yeah. you know, to to do. I probably won't say it, you know? Yeah. If they yeah. don't want to be up, I'm not gonna address it. I don't think I don't think Harvest Way has ever said it. Just play, you know. You just play. Yeah. Let let them fight. Yeah, you yeah, know. Totally. But that's what that's what I believe. But when it works, when somebody does it and it works, and they can make it funny, pff, come on, so cool. Loved <laughs> it. Uh, Cruelty has just been having these unbelievable sets all four shows. That's so awesome. They sound so good. 
uh, people go off like crazy. Like every night when you do the like, you know, yeah, give it up for Gates of Hell and Bob Ford. Yeah. yeah. Give it up for Cool to Yeah. It's like a, a raucous applause. Wow. Wow. And I think uh, it's, it's like we talked about in the Sound of Fury episode mm-hmm. is like thousands of people around the country collectively being like, holy shit, a band from Japan is here. And they and they rip. This and they is rip. And they're heavy. Yeah. And they yeah. like like they're wearing a fucking all out war shirt or something. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn. I got him. All right. I'm gonna go hard. And they're selling shirts. Like I, I, I. It is beautiful to see that they, the meet their immediate thought is like, okay, well, we got to come back. So cool. Whereas, like, how demoralizing could that have been for it to be like, fuck, man, maybe we can't go back for a while. <laughs> Which that's how we feeling feel touring yeah. anywhere else but Japan. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. That's so cool. Yeah, that is a beautiful thing. Um Sanguasugabog doing the murder ball thing every night. Every night. Every night, dude. Wow. People killing each other for this for these gilden blanks, you know? <laughs> Just absolutely yeah. murdering. But it's cool that they they they've got that you can sound that good and he does all the banter and that you can still have a fun little gimmick to throw in there. Yeah. it's That's what they figured out all the little things. They got the memes. Yeah. They figured out how to do like we're hard, we're serious, but there's a little tongue in cheek. They did. And also you know. they just sent me their favorite food places. <laughs> Here is Devin. Devin's favorite food stuff. Let's see. What's up, Hard Lord? This is Devin Swank from Sing with Sugabug. And my three favorite restaurants on this tour was definitely Herbie's in Albany, Ooh. Wizard Burger in Albany, <laughs> oh, those milk, milkshakes came in clutch, and then probably a Tropical Cafe smoothie in Columbia, South Carolina, because after an entire week of eating processed food, I definitely needed a vegetable, so <laughs> had a large green smoothie to clear out the pipes. Dude, he nice. has like a California accent. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's wild. He sounds like an SNL sketch. What's up, hard lore? The ca- <laughs> he sounds the, like the, the California. I got what is it? The green, the Californians. Yeah. He literally sounds Never like get that. off. Yeah, he's he fucking does. Awesome. He's awesome. Uh, um, her, dude, Herbie's in yeah, Albany. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> It's like what a it? it's like a smash burger version of In and Out. Oh, like yeah. the vibe in there, the aesthetic is very much like, hey, we went to In and Out one time and we loved it. Yeah, yeah. But the shakes smoke In and Outs. Really, uh, the fries are plentiful. It's like a whole paper bag full of them. Mm. And then the burger was like classic smash burger, and yeah. they're open till two in the morning. Dude, that's my new biggest thing in this in this post lockdown world that we're in. I need stuff open. Just stay open. Stay open. Ah, People help. don't need jobs. I know. It's crazy. Here's uh, here's Sed from Sanguasuga Bog's three favorite places. All right. Oh, we got all of them. What's up? It's Sed from Sanguasuga Bog. Three favorite restaurants for tour. McDonald's. Mike's Pizza in Amityville. <laughs> Mike's was good. Yeah. And Up with. <laughs> oh, yeah, he threw that in there. That's a little rare. Yeah, too. Here's uh, Drew from Sango Sugar Box, three favorite places. What's up? I'm Drew from Sango Sugar Box. Get my favorite restaurants from this tour have been Canadian McDonald's, Canadian Tim Hortons, and Mike's Pizza. Oh. <laughs> Mike's. Nice. Mike's Pizza was the place we had in, in Amityville with yeah. the, the, the square yeah. vodka slices. Love that. Here is uh, Cody from Sango Sugar Box places. Here's the grand finale. Uh-oh. Thing. Uh-oh. Bar, top three restaurants. Number one, Rock Fiesta from my hometown. I just want to shove that in my face right now. It's mid-meal. <laughs> Number two, Canadian and Tim Hortons. <laughs> Number three is Kirby's in New York. Albany. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Canadian Herbie's, Tim Hortons does go. It does go. Herbie's went fucking crazy, dude. And what I was Wizard? I didn't go to Wizard Burger, but they were they Dude. were the first thing they said when I saw them in Albany was like, "Have you been to Wizard Burger?" 
<laughs> Dude, if a place is at all mystical, I'm going. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would I wish go. They closed at seven, or I would have been there. See, that's okay. Never mind. Now I'm turning Sunday. around. No, but Herbie's two in two in the morning yeah, on a yeah. Sunday, Bo. Beautiful, beautiful. <sighs> that's all I ask. Again, it's in and out. You know, like ah, uh, it's it's just there. It's there for you. And the shake, I cannot stress this enough. This is probably why I sound so bad today. Yeah, right. Yeah, the shake put me over the edge. But holy fuck, I wouldn't take it all. I wouldn't take it back. What, what uh, shit. you flew out the next day? Flew out the next day, went to back, to, f- flew out of Newark again, which yeah. fucking sucked ass. Do you have to drive from Albany to Newark? Yeah, so we left. At, uh, we got to the hotel at like two. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. Got up at six. Oh, dude, to, such a waste of money. That's when the hotel thing is like, God damn it. Yeah. But then there's like, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay somewhere? No one lives by Newark airport. No, you have to stay in. We would have had, and it's just like, what a suck to drive. And I don't know. It yeah. just made more sense to kind of get two nights. We shouldn't have flown out of Newark was really the thing. Should have flown out of Albany. But or Rochester renting or the car yeah. in yep, yep. Newark, you know. Yep. They get you. They, it's just, it is what it is. All right, what's, <laughs> what's today? Was uh, flights and everything okay? Checking your... Items, no problem. Not, not an issue. Not a, not a single keep, morsel of an issue. I keep hearing about people having, you know, so many issues and delays and lost items and things. And knock wood, I've been very fortunate. I love I knock just, wood. I think that has to do with um, people having layovers. Mm. We we really try to fly direct. Yeah, like we make we have a strong emphasis on flying direct. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and obviously you can't all the time. Like LDB, no. you can't get to directly. Uh, Detroit, you really can't get to directly. So there's some risks, but we we uh, we really are mindful with mm-hmm. connections. Mm-hmm. Like we leave two to three hours between them. Smart. So that. If, any, if yeah. your fl- first flight gets delayed, you're not royally fucked. Right, because if you're if it does get delayed, your shit ain't making it. <laughs> it's a nightmare. Straight up. For this tour, we shan't be doing that. Thankfully, yeah, we'll you're driving be, everywhere, right? We're driving everywhere. Van's good. Just got it all fixed up. Nice. <sighs> but, I mean, it's obviously this is all just my eyes here, perspective wise. But what I see is a completely different world of people who are so happy to be at the show. Wow. And, and, and happy to be participating in it. The room is full. Most nights people are like fighting to be in the front. Oh, that's so sick. Unheard of, dude. Unheard of. Truly. So, the doldrums of like, it's like 2015 when touring the, touring the States, like there were some rough spots where like, cause the thing happens where people kind of cycle out, Yeah, you know, they go someplace for, their college tenure. Yeah. And then after four years, they move or whatever. Yep. So scenes are going to fluctuate, obviously. Absolutely. And that's a perfectly normal thing. But, it, you know, there are people who are like carrying this cross and like bearing this cross during those times. And it must be, I'm so interested in seeing that, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's going to be really cool for you guys. Uh, and it's, it's like, finally, you know, Oh, we can talk about our show. Not really. Okay. I mean that we they'll they'll have figured it out. The, you know? Yeah. Okay. Like the lineup goes up tomorrow, but they'll 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 know. Yeah. The lineup. You're, they'll look at yours and go, oh, "That's the same day." Yeah. Wink, wink. Nedge, nedge. Okay, that's right. Uh, but I, yeah, man, all four of these shows were amazing. It's so funny to do a two-hour podcast episode about four <laughs> shows. But <laughs> as is my right. So now. you're saying your your sum up of everything is that there's more people and more excitement. Yeah. Big time. I mean, more people, more, more excitement. Uh, bands sound fucking amazing. Fuck. It's ba- every band sounds good. And now little, little solid state amps are awesome. Woo. What boy, happened? See more Duncan, baby. It's That's crazy. Cause our, but our whole band yeah. is flying, just flies with the amps. We use at practice now. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're if, if you're listening, you're gonna your your sound varies greatly based on the amp you're using. 
Of course. We get to dial in at practice, fly to some show, sound exactly the same. Yep. It's crazy. It's awesome, man. It's it's such a different I, I I got all of my touring stuff ready to go. Yeah, I saw that. So it's pedalboard amp all in one thing, all in a pelican, all sorted nice and neat, thanks to Nico from Knock Loose, who fucking, he cracked the code and then just shared his wealth with everyone. He literally had a list copy and pasted that he had ready because so many people were asking him. Really? His setup is just so crazy efficient or what? It's super efficient where like you use all of the pelican and there's like storage. And so I have all my cables, all of my, my entire, everything besides a cab and a guitar is in one little box. And including strings and tools and whatever the fuck. Mm. All ready to rip. Huge. And just like what all of that would have to go in years ago. Oh, dude. The fucking, it's in a rolly Pelican, you know? Yeah. The fucking amp case that my my main head is in was, it weighs 80 pounds. Yeah. And it's the worst. You you got, you got two guys carrying it. I'm still going to bring it. it which sucks. I'm still going to bring a backup just in that, case. That's but. the backup though. You load it one time, you leave it in the back of the trailer, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Shh. Absolutely. Got to have a backup. Got to have a backup. Um, I think now we head over to Discord for questions. Love the Discord for questions. We're nearing 2,000 members. Wow. <laughs> we need to figure out a special treat for the 2,000th new person. Um, join the Discord. It's linked on all of our stuff. Linked in the description. The Discord is the best way to know about what we got going on. We're gonna do. We're someday soon. We're gonna do a watch along. Maybe some kind of monster. Oh, that um, sounds fun. Yeah. Um. Lots of people. Lots of different topics. Things being discussed. Good wrestling group in there. All kinds of good stuff. It's a lot of questions. And a lot of. And this is the best way to get your questions. Yeah. This right is the, fun, this on is the, the show. Fun, this is the real fun part. All right. Yeah. First question is from Pizza Dog. Have vans gotten better? The vehicle, not the shoe. No. No. Vans, uh, vans, as we know it, as touring guys, do not exist. I, I We have one of the last ones. Yeah. We have a classic 15 passenger that we thought needed a new transmission, mm-hmm. which was like, okay, well, do we put $3,000 into it or do we figure something else out? Do we rent? Because yeah, don't, don't do it. You, you know? Fix it. Luckily, it was not the transmission. It was okay. something sending an improper code. Got it fixed, sorted. Bands are touring in these fucking transits now. Yeah, and the transit sucks, man. You can't lie down. <sighs> Which, you know, maybe is safer. Yeah. As we've seen. Yeah. But, yeah. dude, you got to, like, you're going to drive eight to ten hours. People got to be sleeping. I, I cannot stay awake at 10 a.m. It's impossible for me. <laughs> the sun's out and I just fall asleep. I can't help it. And so can you do that sitting up? Fuck no. Okay. So you're dying. I'm dying. Okay. I'm dying. I have to lay down or at least lean and then your back gets fucked up. Yeah. Ugh. So no, vans are terrible now. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah. What was everybody in? What was, what uh, was the bog in? Uh, Cause I suppose if you have a sprinter with a lot, I loft, think they have a sprinter. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. But dude, and and I, I am wearing you know, the Maddie yeah. shirt. I don't know how I feel about laying down anymore or not being buckled in. It's and, scary. and again, I don't know. I don't know the situation at all. But my mind extrapolated it. Yeah, of course. You know, it's and scary. I'm thinking like, yeah, if it imagine. happened to harm's if it happened to harm's way, I'm never buckled in. Yeah. None of us are. Yeah. So it's like I ain't never been had a seatbelt on in a in a. 4350 ever. So maybe the sprinter, you know, maybe I wouldn't want to be in the loft. Fuck. It's so scary. Dude. It is. So it's fans have gotten worse. Fans have gotten worse. Everything's worse other than the shows. <laughs> yeah. uh, Holden asked, do you enjoy it still? Would you go on long tours again? I just don't think I can time wise right. and life wise. I, I, I think I, I could. I don't know if I can. Yeah. You know, I physically, I'm, I could do it. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if the rest of my life would allow me to do that. Biggest expense Um, on tour personal as a band. Well, yeah. (laughs) You want to answer that? Yeah. I, I am about to, we'll we'll be touring plenty. Um, and we're going to see it's the first time. I'll tell you one thing. It's the first time where I'm going to be touring for a long time 
without living with someone. Mm. So taking care of like the cats and, and my apartment and stuff is like a whole new anxiety, which is great. Um, but yeah, physically I think I'll be okay. Um, and honestly, you you know, you got AG one and Manscaped. I got, boy, boy, do I. And you know, I'm just, um, I'm hearing all these good things and having been to all the fests and shows we've been to over the last year, it's like, (sighs) it's making me excited. Like I'm excited to tour for a month, which is right. Cause in the old days, the biggest stress was like, fuck, I really hope this tour is good. Yeah. And I genuinely don't think you have to worry about that. That's fucking crazy. I really, really don't. It's awesome. Uh, cloaked asks biggest, biggest expense on tour personal as a band, as a band has to be, Gas. Gas and Flights. hotels. Yeah. For Personal you, it's <laughs> beverages. <laughs> it's food, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Typically, it's going to be the same answer for me. I don't buy... Do you buy... Do you, like, shop on tour? I mean, my tours are four days long now, so... Yeah, if, I, if Kali see a thingy, cram me. thingy he likey, call him <laughs> by the thingy he likey. But uh, I would say if I'm doing like a month long tour or something in the past, there would probably be like a store, like at a some purchase. point where I'd be like, can't wait to go there, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the old days, it'd be like, gonna hit Double RL in Brooklyn, you know? Yeah. It's funny when I, all my previous touring too, especially after 2018, the band was like my sole source of income. Mm-hmm. So like on the road, I'm in DIY yeah. punk mode. I'm saving every penny that I every can. dollar you spend is a dollar you don't get from the store. It, 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 exactly, you know. Um, it's gonna be a little different now. So I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. I, I'm excited. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. The shows are gonna be good, and I think that's step one. Uh, anyone plans to go overseas? Of course. Yeah. Plans, hopes, plans, and ho- I hope to, to no, no plans yet. Yeah, ex- same. Yeah, for sure. I can guarantee that harm's way will be everywhere, but there's nothing on paper just yet. Uh, Jackie Gazoos asked, what got better than before and what was good but sucks now? I would say shows in general are better than before. Uh, f- a lot of things are really expensive now. Mm. Like food is expensive. Yeah, because like, dude, I'm like gas. Dude, oh. like our van was a hundred dollars to fill up. It's yeah, it's gonna be double that probably four years ago. Yeah, yeah. so it's just like holy shit. Uh, what well, um, like hitting the drive through and getting food on band used to be forty bucks. You know, yeah, thirty forty bucks. The ten dollar per diem is like still a thing, and that's ten. You can't eat anywhere for ten dollars. No, you literally can't. 7 <laughs> Eleven. Like, exactly. You can get the wings. <laughs> wow. Uh, Chevy asked, What is the best and worst thing you've had to eat and drink on this tour? Drink was the uh, creme brulee latte at Jacob Alejandro in Troy, New York. <laughs> eat, not counting the pizza post. Oh, man. I had an unbelievable McDonald's. In Connecticut after the show. <laughs> they did you proud? Oh, my God. Like, the fry that I ate when I was five years old. Like, I, boom, oh. I was right back there. Great I miss question. The, the old Enjoy. fries. Yeah. Okay. Hit it. How do you survive without a bidet? Well. This is not sponsored, okay? This is not sponsored. But uh, the medicated dude wipes. Brother. It's the only thing I can do now. Yeah, they got some witch hazel in there. They got some aloe in there. It is it is really funny how now that I'm so accustomed to having a bidet when I don't have access to one, it's you're right. Raw. Like you forget red how, meat. Bloody how sensitive. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rare. <laughs> There's cause just think about this logically. If there's shit anywhere else in your body, you're not wiping it with a piece of paper. Right. You're in a hazmat suit pouring ass. Scrubbing. On, you yeah, know? Scrubbing. Yeah. Yep. Why would it you do that to your ass? Respect your ass. Be better. Yeah. Use water. Yeah. Judo Chop Viking asks, how was it hanging with cruelty? Whew. 
I love them. They're cool. They're very cool. Um, Zuma's English is like insane. Yeah, his English is really good. And he's very funny. And he knows it. Okay. So it's awesome. So like when we did the the Papa John's video again, yeah. It wrapped and not oh not only did he say, This is pretty actually pretty good. He also said, I'm entertainer first. <laughs> he like knows yeah. <laughs> that the he's meta got, that yeah. he's putting it on, you know? That's good. What is the most painful point A to point B in America? Dude, I mean, I've done Chicago to L.A. twice in a year. Yeah, but and Denver, Salt Lake to anywhere is the most Oh, okay, okay. Well, so what I was going to say is I've done that. Yeah. It's never as bad as it sounds. No, it starts and you're like, holy shit, this is going to be a long drive. Yeah. And then, the, and then it's like a pretty pleasant long drive. I would say, oh, this is a good question because yeah. this is making me really think. Um, oh, I, I, I've said this before for sure, but we did, you know, basically Miami to Chicago. That was brutal because you're, you drive for eight hours and you're still in Florida. Yeah. Like that some bitch keeps going. It's long. It's crazy. It's um, very long. You're right about. It's treacherous. Uh, Salt Lake to like anywhere yeah. is pretty, pretty treacherous. rough. Like when you're doing, when you're doing the Bay to Reno to Salt Lake. Yeah. That's, that's a wild one. It's called treachery. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Um, um, oh, and also the, the, like El Paso going towards LA. It's long. Those are long fucking Texas drives. Texas to dude. LA is long. Fuck. It adds up, man. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing out there. It's, when it's you crazy. when you finally get to El Paso, yeah. From LA, it's like I don't think we we're gonna make it. Guys. And if you do it in the summer too, it's oh, brutal. My God. That's and a our, that, we, that's probably my answer, probably. Okay. Cause cause that's like the even if the AC is working, it's not working. No AC yeah. works that hard. Yeah. Especially Fuck. in a in a fifteen passenger van. Uh, what fast food has gotten better since your last time for anything? I mean, the beefy crunch is back at Taco Bell. So, <laughs> so it's like, I never left. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think McDonald's has just gotten better. Either well, that or it literally has it's Dude, the, so the new much buns. More. Yeah. Yeah. The new buns are fucking unreal. Dude. I made a, I made a, a proclamation alone. To myself the other day, but I'm I'm done with McDoubles. They're three dollars and thirty cents here. You don't need them. I don't need them. I gotta I get a fucking quarter pounder. Get a quarter pound. Well, the thing is, yeah, it's got kind of, well, use the app and do the two for three fifty nine thing or whatever. Because most yeah. of the time that's on there as a deal. Two for yeah, three fifty nine yeah, yeah. McDouble. Yeah. So you just like ordering a la carte at McDonald's is not a good thing to do. No. It, it really adds up. And my fucking wife, I love her to death. <laughs> she never gives me a meal to order. It's always individual items. Mm. And I'm like, honey, you're, you're, I, I, I'm dying here. <laughs> <laughs> you're bleeding me dry. You're bleeding me dry. McChicken, a McDouble, and a small fry and a medium drink. That's a hundred That's a hundred bucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a double double quarter pounder with cheese. And I will say also, what has gotten better is just not being an idiot and knowing how to look up the amazing local stuff. Oh, dude, what's dude. your? Do you want to gatekeep that, or you want to? I feel like you should let people in. Yeah, no. I either check at first. I check open Yelp. Yeah. Um, and then I'll look at what's the fucking thing called. Don't you do TripAdvisor? TripAdvisor is a big one. Yeah. Uh, I and remember then that. there's like the Infatuist or something, something like that. I'll check yeah. one of those of, of like a, a list of like top 10, boom, in this city. There's always something. Uh, and then I'll out and then I'll put on an APB to one local and just be like, is this true? Smart. And if, and if it's a resounding yes, I'm there. Smart. And the, and this in Troy's case, Justin was like, "We're going here and here," and I go, Psh. "Don't say this on the podcast." <laughs> no, he didn't. But but I will say he said that uh, Brody wrestled in Albany, and they mm -hmm. went to both Jacob Ella, and he's a tough critic. Yeah, 
He's a sick <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and they went, they did the combo of Jacob Alejandro and Herbie's, and he was like blown away. So yeah, they're fucking good. Awesome. Um, should drums be backlined or should drummers stop being lazy and bring their own shit? Uh, I think for the most part, should they should be back on. Should drummers stop being lazy and bring, bring their own shit? Yeah, that's not, that's, I wouldn't say that's really how the case. It's more like there's no space in the venue for five drum kits. So it's not 100%. an issue of laziness. I, when, when we're on a tour and we find out that people are sharing shit, it's like, because <clears throat> that just means more for everybody. Yeah. More space. You know? But I will say sharing drums to me seems, as a non-drummer, seems like sharing a guitar. It's a very, like, personal, physical thing that you're used to. So it's a strange thing. I I I understand, you know, not sharing breakables and just using shells. Yeah. Um, And I think that that makes the most sense. It, it it sucks that it is it, it has to be that way for space reasons because like think about just drum cases <laughs> where are five bands drum cases gonna go all the deads have to go back in the trailer exactly and that sucks it so sucks so bad so i think maybe aside from the headliner everybody should be using one kit yeah yeah or and Typically. or using the using the headliners kit but i think in sego soga box case that's not possible right of course you don't have there a kick go. drum Yep. <laughs> so everybody used Gates to Hell's kit, I think, and then part of Vomit Fourth's, which was great. Um, and I, that's just kind of, that's the way it has to be at shows like this. Yeah, unless you're doing, you know, a big like Cannibal Corpse. When we did that, like obviously there's room for everything. Yes, and we would still have to fucking load out the second we were done. Yes, because the venue that, and is that's out, how it is too. So at these right. bigger venues, it's like, all right, guys, come on, get the fuck out. Yeah. The second you're done, you're loading. So it's like, it's much easy. And also the, the fucking house guys are going to love you. If that kid is staying, if those cabs are staying, they love that. (laughs) that, They, they put that note in the iPad with a big old smile on their face. (laughs) It's beautiful. Uh, so no, I, I think that drums should be backlined. Yeah. At hardcore shows. The same with cabs. Every fucking venue that play that hosts heavy music should have, Two Mesa cabs and an eight by twelve. I would be so happy 100%. if I never had to lug around cabs ever again. Hundred percent. Ugh. Uh, I hate gosh. Asks who's farting loudest in the van. It's not Scott. me. It's not it's me. George. Miles. Really? He's sick in the fucking head, dude. The dark horse, dude. I know. <laughs> the little. It's always the little guys. Wow. And which he's not. He's like a. He could probably deadlift more than me, but he's something wrong with him, dude. <laughs> Something's gone bad in there. <laughs> what about in your band? Um, Nick. Yeah, I can see that. He Always just the little does, guys. He well, and you know what's funny? He's not little now. I know he's he, fucking he's, jacked. He's a monster. But now. that's it's the insane. thing. A jacked little guy. Yeah, I yeah. would bet my life they'd be farting. He used to be vegan. He's no longer vegan. And I don't know what is better or worse for his gas or anything, but he's a funny guy. So he'll just yeah. like comedically go like, huh? You know? Yeah. That's, that's Miles's case. Too. It's sick. yeah. Favorite Long Island's pizza spot. Oh, sole mio. Yeah. That's the, that's the spot. It's the goat. The tortellini. <laughs> oh, uh, we kind of answered this one already. Flying Gollum asks, should bands start using comfort colors to print their merch on? So I posted a poll on our Twitter the other day. And granted, I put them in order of what I thought it should be. And it it did go that way. So I kind of felt I felt like I was leading a little bit. But no, I, I agree. You like L.A. Apparel, but you still think comfort colors is the way? Uh, because I know that the, the public consensus is that's what they want. It was 49% of like 3,000 votes was yeah. Comfort Colors. Um, then it was Gilden Hammer. Which is, then it was well, LA Apparel. That was interesting to me. It, same. Then it was LA Apparel. And then it was Bayside. And Bayside, I, I honestly, I threw in is almost, I almost did Bayside slash other hmm. because I, there are people who were saying fucking. Dude, Shock Aware. Uh, Shock Aware. And Loaded. Shock Aware is probably my favorite. And All Style. That's fucked up. 
I know. That's it's actually ridiculous. disgusting. But but my point is, I think if more people had exposure to Bayside, because it's relatively new and expensive, so they're not very popular yet, I think LA Apparel would drop even lower. I think Shaka smokes everything. I'm, I've yet to, to it's try it. It's like I'm I excited. can't wait to print something on Shaka. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, but I just think comfort colors for them. This is a comfort color shirt. It's right. a large. I washed it once. It fits me perfectly. Right. I have the body type where it fits a large fits me perfectly. But not everyone is the same. Also, not yeah. every comfort colors large is the same. I'm noticing. Yes, it's when it's dyed. The fucking I'll tell you what I'm over is the pepper color. Mm. That one gets fucked up. I think it looks awesome. They look incredible, but the sizes are just wildly inconsistent. Yeah. And, but uh, this is a 1717 blank. It's just like a normal cover color is black. And all of my ones like this with the, the dyed tag, which is like an indicator, they all fit perfect. Again, that fucking twitching tongues, butter, yeah, the butter the color. Mustard one. Yeah. I, it's actually butter. Yeah. Yeah. I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they a- call it butter. Days printed like a banana yellow one fits me perfect. All the like dyed colors. Yeah, they're awesome. Are, they're the best it's ones. Bizarre. So yeah, it you probably bizarre. should mostly because people want it. Yeah. Um, and isn't it Haynes? No, it's Gildan. No, it's Gildan. It is yeah. Gildan. Yeah. Uh, Luke asks, when y'all want food, do y'all use the drive through Go inside, use the app, drive through It just depends. If you have a trailer, you can't. Yeah. yeah. I've done it. I don't. We've done it. We do it. Oh, it's, pretty regularly. I don't recommend it, but um, I avoid it. it, it what I love is like a off the highway drive through where there's like huge parking lots. So the there best. isn't like the, the best, the thing. The thing I know? mean, I run into the thing when I fucking, you heard me curb rash. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. We do it. That's right. Uh, That's right. Luis. Uh, 24x asked is there a vault of hard lore episodes on standby for when you guys are on tour kind of now there is there's a there's two three yeah three well, we ready. Got, i mean there's a it's already yeah. we got a bunch in the tank though episode wait there's three yeah okay the two right. over yeah and then the one at taylor's yeah, yeah. is that it okay so those we got a couple ready to go for for on a, for a rainy day. Co- Could have done this one this week, but I know that this would be fun when it was fresh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also bought a computer and will be traveling with my stuff for when we. we I think it'll be fun to do a. I'm on tour and I want to die. Yeah. Lot episode, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, it, this is an interesting question. Darkasarcus asks. <laughs> If a band in their early 30s wanted to start playing shows in 2023, 2024, what do you recommend they do first? If you're in your, I, I'm, I'm just going to assume that you've already been going to shows. I'm going to assume maybe you're we, not maybe like we say brand both, new. You know? okay, yeah. If you're brand new to the scene, I don't know. I don't know where, how you found this at the early 30s. But if you're brand welcome. new to the scene, you got to go to shows and meet the promoters. That's like step one. But don't be weird about it. No, you can't punish them, but you got to like know who's who. And then one day when you introduce yourself or after, I, I mean to say after you've introduced yourself and you're around said promoter, say, hey, I I'm actually have a band. If you ever need an opener, like let me know. Yeah. It, it, uh, they're going to remember that. Yeah, because yeah, absolutely. Because every promoter is going to go through a list of bands and go, oh, what was that fucking guy's? Yeah. Oh, and then boom, you know. But a lot of the time, the material maketh the band, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know nothing about this Balmora band. Yeah. But I think I know that they're popping off right now. Everybody loves their demo or whatever they put out. Therefore, mm-hmm. they're starting to be on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So sometimes you got to make something dope. And then they, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. It's in many ways. It's simul. <laughs> It's simultaneously the easiest time to get your music out and the most difficult time to have it heard. To stand out. So you do have to have something that stands out for sure. But it's not, I'll tell you what, man, I'm finding 
that it really isn't. I'm hearing more and more music put out by people who I don't know. Yeah. Which is a good thing. A lot. Yeah, it's great. You know, whereas 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. More than 10 years ago. But, you know, there was a point in time where it was like, if you weren't kind of, because no one would know about it, it wouldn't yeah. be around if it wasn't from a friend group that already had an established output. You right. know what I mean? So I think um, if you're trying to play shows, you just got to have have a good demo. Go to your local shows, uh, meet lo- people. I mean, going to shows, being there and supporting and, and like moshing good is step one. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, just network, meet network, people. Network, man. But don't don't punish. Don't be weird, yeah. Don't be weird, but... Plant a seed. Be there. Yeah. Be present. Uh, Rain, this is a good question. Rain Supreme 3 asks, who's the mechanic in the band? Or do y'all just leave it in the hands of the Lord? Mechanic like auto mechanic? Yeah. We have an outstanding mechanic named Greg. <laughs> no, no, in the band. Like the guy on tour who knows what's going on. Uh, James. Yeah. James, who literally picked up the van from Greg two days ago. Um, James is like the guy. He's very, he's the, he's like the, um, yeah, he's just like, he's owned a bunch of cars. And well, doesn't like he done, drive the van when you're not on tour? Typically. <laughs> so yes. But that's also like, you gotta, we live in a place where it gets so cold that you have to. Of course. You can't let it sit. No, um, of course. But yeah, it's, it's James for sure. He, he's the guy who, be, who was aware of fucking oil changes, brake mm-hmm. lines, tires, all the shit. Ours used um, to be Mike. Ah, uh, yes. Mike. Very handy man. Dude, you don't even know, man. The things I've, the, the ways that Mike has come in clutch. Mm. Uh, he was clutch. If, like his car. Yeah, that's good. He read the manual for his car. And like knew how to fix any problem with it. Oh, he just read through the manual and was like, oh, okay, if this is happening, then it's this. He just, he can diagnose any problem wow. and like knows what parts are and shit, which is just so bizarre to me. And he's like a, like a chef mechanic as well. Meaning like if we're playing in a, a school in Germany and we're staying there and there's nothing to eat, he can go through the kitchen and find something. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wow. awesome. He really can do it all. He's the man. Uh, game hen asks, I've noticed young bros projects are in C sharp standard. Is this the hardest tuning ever to me? It is. Sounds great. There, I've said it before, but there is something to away from C sharp standard. Yeah, I know. But there is something to the tone. Uh, I'm sorry to the pitch of a a growl matching the tuning of a guitar. There's something to that. I don't know what it is, but a lot of times, Certain things click a little better than others. Yeah. You know, not Taylor, all Taylor and I's like, bodies are in C sharp, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, prior to isolation, Harm's Way was in different tunings on every release. So it's kind of like you, you can it. hear, you can hear it settle. Yeah. And then on isolation, it was like, oh, this worked. But this it's funny beat. that drop B is just C sharp. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like yeah. if you were, if you tuned your top, Drop B is C sharp standard, but with the B, the first string in B, right? I believe so. So you're basically in C sharp standard too. The high E is a B. Yeah. And yeah. everything else is, what is that? F sharp. F sharp G. F, uh, F sharp. I think it's uh, F sharp G E. E. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's. Something. That's, that's C sharp standard. So you're right there. <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> We're pros, dude. <laughs> I don't know. If yeah, I still have anything. mine written down. What's it like board? being straight edge and touring with big potheads? I don't know. For me, <laughs> uh, you either there's one of there's one there's two kinds of big potheads to tour with. You either get Miles or you get Kale. Ah, you know, you Kale, who's like, I need to smoke weed. Yeah, or or today's not happening. <laughs> But or Miles you, smokes and he Miles ponders. Miles is like, um, yeah, you would never know this, but I'm pretty high right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking my phone to see if my dad's calling me. Nope. Hey, Dad. Hey, Pop. We were saying before the show how funny it would be to have my dad on and just punish him about God. You say you fuck with God um, or what? <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> uh, oh, assuming the band is driving on tour, how do you decide the driving duties? 
it kind of just happens. Just happens. It really just kind of naturally does it. James is the day for us. Typically, James is the daytime driver. I'm the nighttime driver. Typically, um, I can't stay awake during the day. I and like, let's be honest. The, I I doubt the other guys give a shit because not driving is fucking dope. Not like, driving, driving sucks. Yeah, you know. If you want to be the driver, be the driver. I don't know how like Taylor always drives, right? Yep. Or like Nick Jet, like always, famously is always the driver. It's like, how do you do that? Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, favorite a real life idiot asks, "Who's your favorite Bog member and why is it Drew?" Honestly, it might it might be Drew, and I'll I like them all. Mm. Drew is the TM, mm. so he's very like coherent yeah. and level headed. Not that they, the rest of them aren't. I forgot a huge moment from this okay. tour. This after, is why we do it. After the Connecticut show. This is, and again, this is one of those things that might not ever be funny to anyone but me, Drew, and said who witnessed it. Where after Dead Body Plays, a guy is like on his way out of the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing to the side of the venue, like pretty kind of far away, talking to both Drew and said. And a guy comes out. You know, he's leaving. He's out. He's done in a shirt that just has an outline of the state of Connecticut. No words, just an outline of the state of Connecticut. He looks at me and he goes, dude, you fucking incredible fucking guitar. Daps me up and leaves. (laughs) Fucking guitar. Dude. <laughs> fucking guitar to the bass player <laughs> the t- <laughs> yeah yes. yeah yeah thinking why do people confuse you and taylor so much i don't know but it's like i that makes it so much better yeah of course because even if it was taylor the tight horns fucking too. guitar <laughs> as the as like the thing you have to say about a live yeah. band you just saw just like guitar fucking <laughs> microphone <laughs> yeah hi-hats Unbelievable! It was it was un. It changed everything because now Jeez. I'm just gonna see everybody and be like, dude, fucking guitar, holy shit! Oh, um, a champ. Machines ninety five. Is there an album slash artist that has been on repeat during drives or played the most any genre? There sure is. And his name is Longmont Potion Castle. Wow. You may be hearing a little bit more about him later. Wow. What's your answer, Bo? Uh, James plays uh, gambling podcasts <laughs> and uh, like sports betting podcasts a lot and AM radio. <laughs> AM radio? Dude, he listens to AM sports God. radio. He, Chris does too. They're fucking psychos. That's brutal. Yeah. Uh, with me, you're, the chances of, of me starting, of me doing a late night drive and you're not hearing rumors is... Rumors is the one. I play rumors a lot. Wow. It's great to drive to. Yeah. I'm a big like movie score guy driving. I can see that. See, that would lull me to sleep. Oh, Hans Zimmer live at Prague. You're not sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not sleeping. <laughs> you're lit- yeah, you're right. crashing that fucker. <laughs> I am the pirate. Straight up, dude. I'm crashing um, the van. What is the wildest cruelty USA food hot take aside from CT pizza? Papa John's and fucking Papa Little John's Caesars. is insane. Um, I will say I liked what they had. I don't think this is hot. This is only hot because of the second part of it. But they said that Whataburger tastes like Japanese prison food, which makes me think, A, I love you. B, yeah. I got to get my ass to a Japanese <laughs> prison. <laughs> Straight up. Let's go. Oh. Um. Do they like In-N-Out? Oh, yeah. They were yeah. like, I, why is this in the same conversation? Yeah. Is it there? there you go, guys. They Please. couldn't fathom why people talk about Whataburger and In-N-Out in the same breath. Please. They're like, this is so different. So. Whataburger is basically Burger King. I, yeah. It's between Burger King and Wendy's, which I like both. I like all three. I like, I, yeah, I do. I like it, but it, but it just doesn't belong in the combo. Agreed. I agreed. Let's see. Oh, what are y'all's deserted island movies? You can pick two each on Broken oh. Wings. Asks. 
Hmm. I wonder how different ours were going to be. Mine would be YouTube Premium and... <laughs> That's cheating. And... Uh, <laughs> Hollowed out inside it. <laughs> yeah. Mine would be YouTube Premium and... Because I already say, if I have my phone with two movies on it, one of them is YouTube Premium with all my downloaded videos. And... You know that's not the question. That's such a cop-out. So it would be YouTube Premium. (laughs) Two Deserted Island movies, Ratatouille, and... Silence of the Lambs, probably. I, that's a good one. Could that's watch any t- any day, anytime. Yeah. Um, mine would probably be Return of the King. Really? It's Hey, if you're on a desert island and you got a th- yeah, three and a half plus hours. hour version of one of the... You it know. just would kill me to only have part three of... It's got... I've realized it's got like my favorite parts collectively. So it's like fine. And I don't know, probably something the godfather you know i believe in america like i can't i might I can't actually do that. like departed instead of ratatouille dude fucking departed because it's so pleasant to start and stop over again you know it's a perfect movie it's fucking awesome uh bread is a good question bread asks what is the etiquette with watching opening local bands on tour do you try to watch as many as you can and i think that is the trying to watch as many as you can is that's the that's, that's the, the etiquette yeah like look sometimes you have to go do stuff or sometimes you want to go to the gym or yeah. you know, what are you going to do? You know, that's once but, the show starts, like that's the time you have that day. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Cause you're driving, loading, sound checking, boom, doing whatever bullshit. And then it's like, okay, we have 45 minutes before doors. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. God damn it. Uh, Johnny sledge asked, are there any cities that may have been slept on pre COVID that are now popping off? Uh, All of the ones you just said, this is, we just played a, B market tour and it rocked and every, every show was pretty much sold out. The biggest foot in my mouth I've ever had was over St. Louis. St. Louis is much different now. Really? Yeah. I years and years ago tweeted about St. Louis, like not being great to play and was immediately reprimanded by locals. Right. Apologized and then have been proved wrong many times. I mean, over. that was that was one of my least favorite cities in America to play, mostly just because the show wasn't that good. And it, I, I, it, it's back to what I was talking about: how like people kind of cycle out and move and thing, Dude, th- things. Things. Vegas right now is night and day from what it used to be. Dude, that is crazy. It's like too. You, you got like you got to play Vegas. Every band's got to play Vegas. Harm's Way never played Vegas until like 2018. Yeah, it's amazing. That was like our first time playing like a real show. We played a House of Blues thing with, at the gates. Ah, yes. That was when they, that's when we started before doors. <laughs> uh, Want to talk about uh, Baldur's Gate 3 experience so far? <sighs> you playing it? I have, I played, I think I put four hours into it. Uh-huh. So not super deep. I got a four man party going, you know, I've heard that it's a lot more fun with people. Oh, I, I wouldn't want to play this with people. Neither would I. This is the kind of game I I'm, I'm having a great time on my own, but, uh, I'm playing on steam deck, which is not like that was out of, I had to. Right. So I think I'm going to stop and wait for it to come out on PlayStation so I can start over and finish. You can, um, download steam and get it on your Mac. It's Mac compatible. Oh, really? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I bought it. Because I was like, well, I can play this on tour if I'm bringing my MacBook. Wait, I can just play this on this? Yeah, because it's oh, Steam. Done. Done. Game is amazing. <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, I've felt um, that way the entire time. It's so fucking good. It feels like Knights of the Old Republic, but like way more fleshed out. That's what it feels like to me. Agree. Um, well, it's turn based. Every it's decision very, you make. It's very Dragon things. Age. Yeah. Very Diablo, yeah. but with yeah. like the depth of The Witcher. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way like to call it. The, every NPC has an actual thing to say. And are all voice acted. I found out even the animals are all voice acted. It's crazy. There is animal speech, yeah. it's a spell. So uh-huh. you can talk to any animal and it's been done. Yeah. I've been talking to this rat in the. <laughs> 
in one of the areas. I love it. It's so fun. Um, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not, I, 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 it's, there's a lot, there's a big learning curve. If you don't know what cantrips and like how Dungeons and Dragons works, mm -hmm. it's a bit to learn. Perception checks and shit. Yeah. All that shit is just oh, kind of I like, I just ah. load my save file when I fail one. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I just, save constantly. <laughs> I'm yeah. just loading and doing it again. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to not have the perfect game. Exactly. Dude, I'm with you. Yeah, get what, what for? Why? Yeah, why? I'm going to have fun. Yeah. Uh, Tofu Tooth asked, was it a planned thing at Sound of Fury 20 2022 to throw in the Catalina wine mixer drum solo before Violent Procreation? Absolutely. He does it all the time. I did it in practice <laughs> every time. <laughs> uh, Touring in your 30s is a different thing. Do you think it's a young man's game or nah? For, uh, asked by Benny Liquid. Who's Benny Liquid? That's a lot from a Longmont. Uh, oh, no shit. Fish. Yeah. Fuck. That's amazing. Benny um, Liquid. I think it the your your perception just changes. Yes. What you're willing to do changes, but then you're going to generally have the wherewithal, the budget, whatever, to make it yeah. okay for your decaying body. I am, I am, I would say 31-year-old Colin to 25-year-old Colin is 100 times smarter. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've, I've got, I've grown 100 times smarter since my, uh, frontal cortex finished <laughs> developing, you know, finished developing, whatever yeah. it's called. Brain, <laughs> brain grew smarter. Brain now. way smart. Uh, so that's been nice just to be more aware of like, Oh, I'm, I shouldn't, I had, didn't get to do this for a long time. So I should probably not take this time for granted. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm wondering how that's going to be. I, I've not had to wait for people to like shower and stuff in a long time. Yeah, that sucks, so I'm a dude. little, you know. It sucks. <laughs> um, but you know, it, part of me was like, "Ah, oh, fuck yeah, I'm in Hartford." I still get to do an awesome thing with my best friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I mean that as in like, I'm in a terrible part of town and I'm having a great but, but I'm time. pumped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I understood. But I, yeah. Um, Dewey Legato. Fuck you, Dewey, bitch. <laughs> is it, yeah, I answered this already, but Jan Boyga asked, is it easier to tour as a four piece since you have more room for travel infinitely? Infinitely. Infinitely. Uh, the final question by Juicy, how many McNuggets can you down in one sitting? How many do you think you could? I have gotten 40 and could have finished them, but didn't need guilt, to like guilt gorge. stopped you. Yeah. Well, I was just like, I'm, I'm at a comfortable level and I like cold nuggets actually. So whatever. Um, if I was hungry and if I was pressed, 60. I think I could eat 60 nuggets. I think there's a difference between could and like in my, like I could eat McNuggets all day and not stop. You know? Yeah. Right. Right. They're made for that. <laughs> the problem is that you start to become aware and go, I should not be doing this. Yes. Could. How many? Yeah. If you had to. If I had to. Yeah. If it was like, uh, in 200, order for chili 200, to, be, to live probably. well, you think you could do 200 at once? 100%. That's well, a lot. 20 nuggets does nothing to me. I could do that 10 times, you know? Yeah. I, but on. I'm saying this is in an if my dog is at gunpoint scenario. Does one chicken McNugget weigh? A chicken McNugget is 16 and a half grams. Okay. 16.5 times 200 is 3,300 grams. What is that? 3,300 grams into pounds and ounces is seven pounds. You're not eating seven pounds in a sitting. That's easy. No. No, <laughs> no it's not. I dude. would break one sweat. You're. This is a cool hand, Luke. Dude, this is gun to my dog's head yeah i'm eating all of them i'm eating a thousand seven pounds would rupture your stomach no it wouldn't seven pounds it wouldn't do anything to me 
I have seven pounds of shit in me right now. Begging, Everybody knows. Everybody's to listening up. to this is shaking their head right now. And just know that nuggets is easy. <laughs> You're saying you have a gun to my dog's head saying eat 200 nuggets. I don't think you could eat a hundred. I don't I think you I could eat three and a half pounds in one sitting. hundred is effortless. Dude. <laughs> Dude, the Ooh. day that spicy McNuggets came out, me and, me and Nate got 80 each. Yeah. Okay. And that was this like, is- that was like, damn, I need another 80. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got 40 for lunch, 40 for dinner, and both times was like... Between those meals, I was like, I got to go back. Yeah, After yeah. After dinner, I, I was like, I should go back and get 40 just in case they're gone tomorrow. Yeah, but that's not one city. It could have been. That's what I'm saying. It, it, yeah. I wanted All it right. to be. <laughs> seven pounds. <laughs> I could eat. F- seven, seven and a quarter, actually. Yeah, but think about what the Nathan's hot dogs guys are doing. How, what's the record? A billion. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog eating record yeah. by 2023. Joey Chestnut, what is did he do? 60 or 76. Yeah. Okay. Do that so, math. Tell me that'll rupture okay. his ass. What does <laughs> one Nathan's hot dog weigh? It is 56 grams. So what did I say? 76. So 56 times 76. Wow. What? That is, that's a lot more than the nuggets. That's 9.3 pounds. Seven pounds of food? That's a big steak. No, that yeah. is not a big steak. 100%. <laughs> a 64-ounce steak I is could not. do the big Texan by myself. You are out of your fucking mind. I could mind. do it. You think you think I can't do it? I do not think you could do. That's a good idea for an episode. I, Us I do, do not the big think Texan? you. Yeah, I could. I would it. have because you got to eat the potatoes and shit too. It's crazy. that's the hard part. But I think yeah. I could eat the steak, no problem. <sighs> this has been hard lore stories. From <laughs> <laughs> Next week I'm gonna eat the big Texan. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was fun. This, it, this yeah. is, I'm, I'm so excited to do this after the harm's way tour. Dude, I'm going to be a different man. I'm going to be captain Jack Sparrow. Everyone is so slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to fucking hate it. I hope so, but I'm excited. Me too. We will see you next week. Uh, what not soon. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Get uh, your harm's way tickets. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Bye. Bye.